In what reality would two neo-Nazis found guilty of 10 murders only receive 30 years each? That's the reality we're in. Wolfgang Abel and Marco Ferlin, known as Ludwig, served even shorter sentences. Welcome to Claws and Crime Chronicles, where we dive deep into the dark and enigmatic world of true crime and mysteries. Today, we delve into a haunting tale that echoes the dark corridors of a past marred by sinister deeds. The story we're about to unfold unveils the harrowing crimes of Wolfgang Abel and Marco Ferlin, a duo shrouded in mystery and infamy. From their notorious reign of terror to a string of murders that shook entire communities, their saga is one of brutality and a web of unsolved mysteries. Join me as we journey through the disturbing labyrinth of Abel and Ferlin's crimes, a tale that continues to haunt the annals of criminal history. Wolfgang Abel, born on March 25, 1959, and Marco Ferlin, born on January 16, 1960, formed a German-Italian duo responsible for a series of killings across Italy, the Netherlands, and Germany from 1977 to 1984. They claimed innocence, asserting they were being made scapegoats by a police force unable to find the actual culprits. Both of them hailed from affluent backgrounds in Verona. Marco Ferlin, residing in the prestigious Borgo Trento area, was the son of the head of the Burns unit at the Ospedale Civil Majori in Verona. He was close to completing a physics degree at the University of Padua when arrested. Wolfgang Abel lived in Negrar di Valpolicella, moving there after living in Munich. His father held a high position in a German insurance company, and Wolfgang himself graduated with honors in mathematics, working in the same company as his father. Their alliance began in high school, bonding over a shared belief in cleansing the world of what they considered deviant, targeting prostitutes, homeless individuals, homosexuals, drug users, sinful priests, nightclubs, and pornographic theaters. Their connection persisted post-school, solidifying within a group gathering at Piazza Vittorio Veneto in Borgo Trento. At every grisly crime scene, there lay a chilling leaflet emblazoned with the name Ludwig atop a Nazi emblem. Each leaflet bore ominous slogans like we are the last of the Nazis and death comes to those who betray the true God, detailing the rationale behind each murder. Their first victim, Guirino Spinelli, met his tragic end in August 1977 in Verona. He was asleep in his Fiat 126 when Wolfgang Abel and Marco Ferlin ruthlessly set fire to the car with Molotov cocktails, deeming him a target because they believed he was Roma, a gypsy. The haunting pattern continued. The second victim, Luciano Stefanato, a gay sommelier, faced a brutal death in Padua on December 17, 1978, stabbed multiple times in a heinous attack. His lifeless body was discovered in a red Alfa Romeo Giulia, two knives protruding from his back. Claudio Costa met a similarly tragic fate in Venice on December 12, 1979. Attacked for his alleged involvement in drugs or being gay, Costa suffered about 20 stab wounds. Despite an anonymous call to the police, Costa succumbed to his injuries before help arrived. He was 22 years old. The chilling saga took a sinister turn on November 25, 1980, when the first of many leaflets arrived at the IL Gazzettino offices. These ominous documents, sent to the media, offered a disturbing glimpse into the twisted rationale behind the murders, spewing Nazi rhetoric and hateful ideologies. The relentless chain of horrifying events continued. On December 20, 1980, Vicenza, Abel and Ferland targeted Alice Maria Barella, a Vicenza prostitute. She met with a gruesome fate, brutally murdered with an axe and hammer, her body mutilated. Two days later, 
The Ludwig pamphlet arrived at Ogazzatino offices, confessing to Barella's death in chilling detail. On May 24, 1981, Porta San Giorgio, Luca Martinotti, a 17-year-old student, perished in a fire at the ancient tower of Porta San Giorgio. The tower, a refuge for the homeless and drug addicts, became an ominous scene of tragedy. On July 20, 1982, in Vicenza, the violence escalated as Father Mario Lovato and Father Giovanni Battista Pigato were bludgeoned to death with hammers at the sanctuary of the Madonna di Monte Barico. Their crime? Belonging to the cult of the Madonna, an act deemed heretical by the Ludwig duo. On February 26, 1983, in Trento, Abel and Ferland targeted Father Armando Bison, accusing him of past sexual abuse allegations. Their brutal assault included a nail driven into his forehead using an awl, topped with a crucifix. Witnesses spotted two men carrying plastic bags in the area. With each murder, the mysterious Ludwig left a haunting calling card, a leaflet sent to the media, proclaiming divine punishment for those deemed traitors to the true God. The sinister revelations continued to unfold, leaving a trail of terror and unanswered questions in their wake. Silvano Romano, a Pavia professor, faced arrest on March 29, 1983, suspected as the mastermind behind Ludwig. However, authorities released him on April 6, realizing his lack of involvement. In a tragic event on May 14, 1983, Abel and Ferlin set fire to the Eros Porn Theater in Milan, resulting in the deaths of six individuals, including a doctor, Livio Ceresoli, who entered the building to provide medical aid and who was posthumously awarded the award for civil valor. An estimated 40 more people were injured. Speculation emerged regarding potential accomplices beyond the duo. Karina Tartarotti, a bartender at a Munich nightclub called Liverpool, fell victim to Abel and Ferlin's arson on January 7, 1984, when they ignited the crowded disco. While she survived the initial incident, Tartarotti succumbed to her injuries on April 27, 1984, at the age of 21. There are claims that in December 1983, Abel and Ferlin were linked to a fire at the Red House Strip Club in Amsterdam, resulting in 13 deaths. However, someone else was arrested and convicted for this incident. On the evening of March 4, 1984, the duo infiltrated the Melamara Disco in Castiglione del Stivier, Mantua Province, amidst a carnival-themed gathering with around 400 masked youngsters. Disguised as a Piero, one of the perpetrators opened an emergency exit, allowing their accomplice, carrying two gasoline canisters, to enter. In a concealed area, Abel and Ferlin began pouring gasoline onto the carpet to ignite a fire. However, they underestimated the venue's fire-resistant carpeting, a safety measure mandated after the Cinema Statuto fire in Turin in February 1983. This slowed down the fire spread, and a vigilant security officer managed to extinguish it. When their actions were discovered, the assailants attempted to attack the bouncer to flee, but they were apprehended by the crowd and subsequently arrested by the police. This event marked the conclusion of Ludwig's spree, resulting in 28 fatalities and 39 injuries. The trial in Vicenza commenced on December 1st, 1986, concluding on February 10, 1987. The accused faced charges related to up to 15 murders. Throughout the trial, Ferlin contested the case, asserting that the evidence presented against him was fabricated and that he was framed. Authorities believed Abel was the primary orchestrator of the Ludwig murders. Psychiatric evaluation was proposed for Abel, also requested by Ferlin's defenders. However, Abel declined to participate in the discussions. 
Specialists Bologna and Reggiani suggested that Abel had limited comprehension of the repercussions of his actions and argued that he lacked the emotional nurturing necessary for healthy personality development. This assertion was heavily debated. Ultimately, on February 10, 1987, both were sentenced to 30 years in prison, despite the prosecution seeking life imprisonment for both. Later on, on June 15, 1988, the Court of Assizes of Venice reviewed the case, initiating their imprisonment. Ferlin was to be imprisoned in Casale di Scodosia, a town in the Padua province, from where he fled in February 1991, just before the final sentence from the Court of Cassation. He was apprehended in May 1995 in Crete, living under an alias. Meanwhile, on April 10, 1999, the Court of Appeal of Venice, headed by Nicola Lercario, sentenced him to 27 years in prison, a verdict upheld by the Court of Cassation on February 11, 1991. Abel was also sentenced to 27 years during the same proceedings. Following his arrest in Crete, Ferlin attempted suicide in prison but emerged unharmed after trying to hang himself on the bars using a sheet. Reports from various newspapers offer differing accounts of the trial outcome. Some state convictions for five murders and acquittals for ten, while others suggest guilty verdicts for ten murders and acquittals on five counts due to insufficient evidence. The absence of life sentences stemmed from expert opinions during the trial that both men were mentally unstable. Neither appeared for the verdict announcement, which is not mandatory in Italian courts. After serving their sentences, both were mandated to undergo three years of psychiatric therapy. The name Ludwig became a symbol for others in the Italian far-right movement, drawing inspiration from the racist ideologies perpetuated by Abel and Ferlin through media coverage. Distancing themselves from Ludwig, a group convened in Florence on February 27, 1990, perpetrating mass violence against street vendors and immigrant drug dealers across the city. Their flyers, signed as Ludwig, sparked a series of bomb attacks targeting nomadic camps in Tuscany, inflicting severe injuries, notably on Roma communities. Among these assaults, a devastating bomb attack in the province of Pisa left a young girl maimed, losing an eye and a hand. Wolfgang Abel was placed under house arrest, akin to probation, on June 6, 2009, at his parents' villa. Throughout, he maintained his innocence, asserting that he hadn't committed any wrongdoing and that it is as if nothing had happened. Despite this, he attempted suicide five times during his imprisonment. Abel dismissed the fire incident leading to his arrest as a youthful prank and denied any association with Nazism, claiming to hold liberal views. In 2013, Abel was fully released from house arrest and freed from the judicial system. Both individuals managed to secure jobs and integrate into communities. Presently, it is believed that Abel and Ferlin lead separate lives, living relatively anonymously. In the darkness of unsolved mysteries and haunting crimes, the saga of Ludwig, Abel, and Ferlin unfolds as a testament to the complexities of the human mind and the horrors it can conceive. While justice was served to some extent, the enigmatic essence of their deeds leaves lingering questions, unsolved chapters in the annals of crime. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history's mysteries. Remember to subscribe, like, and share, and leave a comment as we continue to unearth the enigmatic stories that have shaped our world. Until the next episode, this is Kat from Claws and Crime Chronicles, signing off.